Lately, I've been working in fourth. I made a fourth spreadsheet program, and I made a video about my fourth spreadsheet program. I got feedback on my video from Bob Armstrong, who works in fourth and APL. He combines elements of fourth and APL in his system called Cozy. Bob Armstrong suggested I look at Dialog, a commercial implementation of APL. I was poking around the internet, reading about APL and Dialog, and I found a Sudoku solver in Dialog, demonstrated in a YouTube video on the channel Dialog Limited. You might want to go ahead and watch that video before you watch my response. Links are in the description below. Dialog Sudoku solver video is well liked with a nice, simple, minimalist style, but the Sudoku solving program itself is a challenge to understand. Some of the YouTube viewers left comments like, I just couldn't follow this. My mind just burst into flames, and I can't imagine programming like this in a million years. And I thought it was too long at nine lines, so I set out to write a shorter and clearer Sudoku solving program in APL. First I had to learn APL, which I did with the help of tryapl.org and the dialogue manuals. Let me show you what I came up with. A Sudoku Puzzle the puzzle in 9x9 nine nine shape. Each zero in the puzzle is a blank to be filled with a number from 1 to 9. 81 zeros except for 3 in the first place. Again, the puzzle. The puzzle with 3 filling its first blank. 81 zeros except for 7 in the third place. The puzzle with 3 filling its first blank and 7 filling its second blank. The index of the first blank. The index of this puzzle's second blank. A function that fills the next blank of its left argument with its right argument. For example, again, the puzzle with 3 filling its first blank. And with 7 filling its second blank. A 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The fourth row of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. Again, the fourth row of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The eighth column of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. Again, the eighth column of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The catenated fourth row and eighth column of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The upper left 3x3 three three box of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. All but the first three columns of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The upper middle 3x3 three three box of a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. A 3x3 three three box in a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The box that contains the entry in the fourth row and eighth column. A function that returns the catenated row, column, and box of an entry in a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku puzzle. The function's left argument is the puzzle, and the function's right argument is a vector containing the row and column indices of the entry, both counted from zero. For example, the catenated row, column, and box of the entry in the fourth row and eighth column. The row and column indices, both counted from zero, 
of the 13th entry in row major order of a 9 by 9 matrix. The row and column indices both counted from zero of the first blank in a Sudoku puzzle. The numbers 1 to 9. The numbers 1 to 9 without 3, 4, or 8. A function that returns the numbers 1 to 9 without the numbers in the row, column, or box of the first blank of a Sudoku puzzle. For example, the numbers that can fill the first blank of a Sudoku puzzle without creating a new pair of duplicate numbers in the blanks, row, column, or box. Again, the puzzle. A function whose right argument is a Sudoku puzzle. If the puzzle has no blanks, the function returns the puzzle itself. If no numbers are available to fill the first blank, the function returns an empty vector. Otherwise, the function is applied recursively to the puzzle with each available number filling the puzzle's first blank, and the results are catenated into a single vector, which the function returns after it undoes the enclosure of the reduced vector. For example, the solution to the Sudoku puzzle. Here is the whole program. In the final line, the function definition is separated by two diamonds into three statements. You might ask why we would explicitly check in the second statement whether any numbers are available to fill the puzzle's first blank as that case should be handled adequately in the third statement. If you apply a function to each member of an empty vector, you would expect the result to be an empty vector. But apparently Dialog's each operator calls the function once even on an empty vector. And in this case, that function is a recursive call. Somehow we must avoid an infinite loop of recursive calls. It's annoying to have to add or subtract ones here and there, but that's what happens when a language counts from 1 instead of from 0. Dialog counts from 1, and I think that's for compatibility with APL. APL is fairly old, designed before the modern consensus to count from 0, if there is such a consensus. Anyway, there are good reasons to count from 0 and good reasons to count from 1. So APL gives and APL takes away. But in the end, it enables us to write a pretty short program of only four lines. This program is a simple backtracking solver that goes through the decision tree depth first. We can expect it to solve most Sudoku puzzles pretty quickly, say, under a second, without using much memory. However, this solver fails on the hardest Sudoku puzzles. Here's a hard puzzle I found online. Actually, both puzzles I've shown are from the Haskell Wiki. If we try to solve the hard puzzle, we get expression time limit exceeded after about 15 seconds. I believe tryapl.org imposes restrictions because our programs are running on their servers. I should point out that Dialog lets you download their product for evaluation for free. I suppose there would be no time limit when our programs run on our own machines, but I haven't tried it. What about Dialog's nine-line Sudoku solver? Can it solve the hard puzzle if it runs on tryapl.org? Nope, it fails as well. But the error is different, WS full. I think the program is running out of memory. If you read Dialog's own notes on their Sudoku solver, they talk about going through the decision tree breadth first. You have to wonder why they would go breadth first, as it leads to storing many more Sudoku boards than depth first. When you go depth first, 
You keep fewer than 81 boards at once. But breadth first, it's hard to say. Each blank can be filled by up to nine numbers. Most of the time it will be fewer than nine, especially when you reach the end of the puzzle. Suppose the puzzle has 60 blanks, and suppose for the first half, each blank can hold two numbers. Suppose for the second half, zero or one possible fillings are much more likely, and the tree gets thinner. Then the tree has two to the 30th boards at depth 30. That's a billion. If you use 81 bytes to store each board, going breadth first takes 80 gigabytes of memory, way more than depth first, and probably more than you have in your computer. So why did Dialog choose to go breadth first in their Sudoku solver? I don't know, but perhaps they wanted a solution that was characteristically APL-ish, especially a solution without guards or recursion as in my program. How does fourth compare to APL at solving this problem? I wrote another solver that implements the same algorithm in G fourth. Here's my fourth program. I'll go through it line by line, and if you want to know more about the built-in words, you might check out the G fourth manual. You can find the G fourth manual by a web search or by a link in the description below. In the first line, we allocate memory for a single Sudoku puzzle and we write an extra zero at the end so that we'll always find a zero when we seek it, even if the puzzle is complete. In the second line, we define a function, or in fourth terms we define a word, that moves 81 numbers from the stack into the puzzle space. In the third line, we define a word that copies 81 numbers from the puzzle space to the output stream. Every nine numbers, a carriage return is inserted. Now when we go filling in the blanks in the Sudoku puzzle, we will need to find the next blank. In the fourth line, we have a word that when given a position n in the puzzle, finds the next blank position n prime. It's common to call a value that's just one bit in size a flag, and often you'll keep 16 or 32 or 64 of these together in a single number. I'll call that a flag too. In this program, we keep nine bits for the numbers one to nine, plus sometimes another bit for the number zero. This word, p fetch or, in the fifth line, sees a number 0 to 9 in position n of the puzzle and turns on the corresponding bit of input flag f, yielding f prime. In the sixth line, we have a word that looks at the whole row of position n of the puzzle and returns a flag indicating which numbers are there. The seventh line does the same for its column and the eighth line, its box. In the definition of the word solve, we find the next blank position n after the position n0 on the stack. If the next blank is beyond the end of the puzzle, then the puzzle is complete. We show it and leave the program. Otherwise, we see what entries are already in the row, column, and box of position n, ignoring zero. For each number i from once nine, if i does not appear in the row, column, or box of position n, then we write i into position n and solve the puzzle recursively. If we return from that, there must not be a solution with i in position n, so we make position n blank again. Here the program solves a puzzle. And here it solves the hard puzzle. So there you have it, two simple backtracking Sudoku solvers, one in APL and one in fourth. The APL program is shorter, but I wouldn't say APL offers an advantage for this problem. Thanks for coming by.